welcome to worship on this first Sunday in Advent. It is a joy to be in the house of the Lord to bring songs of praise unto our God. We have just a few announcements to share. First of all, welcome to our visitors today, any visitors that are with us. I have some friends from Westminster Presbyterian Church in Columbia here today. I told them they needed to stay away for a year, and they did that, and now they came to visit me, which is just such a blessing for my favorite people in the whole wide world. So thank you for coming and being with us. Uh, happy Advent to all of us. This is a time in our church year when we draw near to Christ in a very special way, and we remember the gift of God's Son who came into our world. And we mark this time with our Advent candles, and we will be lighting that in just a moment. So welcome to our first Advent service. And uh, I pray that you will join us on Wednesday evenings from 5.30 to 7 when we have our Advent study. We meet in Hunter Hall, have a meal together, and then with the children, have, uh, we light a candle there as well. And then in Cook Conference Room, we'll have our adult study. So I hope you'll consider coming this week. And many thanks to all who stayed last Sunday to decorate our church. Isn't it beautiful? So very beautiful. Our family night supper will be this coming Sunday, next week at 6 o'clock. It'll be our children's Christmas program. And I know you're looking forward to that, so please come and, and let us uh, support our children and enjoy their music. We'll have dinner at Roma's tomorrow night, 6.30, our monthly dinner. And our Christmas joy offering will, will be taken up toward the end of the month. And you're, you're getting little leaflets. I hope you're reading those in your bulletin each week that describe where this money goes. So consider giving a generous offering to Christmas joy. We have some uh, many prayer concerns always, but a special prayers for Jim White's family. Jim, who passed away this week, his memorial service was on Friday, and we honored him and his beautiful life. But we pray for the family. We also lift up Jim Kennedy's family. His service was yesterday. And we celebrated his life as well. Um, the families need our prayers, so please remember them. Prayers also for Roger Burris. Hasn't been doing very, very well. He needs our prayers. The family needs our prayers as they care for him. And Bob Morris as well is gaining strength. Jane Jones gaining strength. And Augusta Dixon, she, uh, she's through half of her treatments. But we hear that she's responding remarkably well. It's good, good news, and we're excited about that. But continue to pray that she will get through this time and get back to her seat right back there so, so uh, we can enjoy her presence with us. We can enjoy her presence. Let us worship the Lord. family is going to come and light our candle, our first candle of Advent. On this first, on this first Sunday of Advent, we wish you greetings, hope, peace, joy, 
and love this Advent season in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch and wait for Christ's coming. We light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. We light this candle of hope. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.8 He will keep you strong to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God of hope, out of death you bring life. Renew us in hope so that we may be alert to the dawning of Christ's advent among us. God of promise, God of hope, until our darkness come. Amen. And now let us stand for our call to worship. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Stir up your might and come to save us. Let us worship the Lord. Let us worship. God's amazing love is this while we were sinners Christ died for us because we have faith in in him we dare to approach God with confidence in faith and penitence let us confess our sin before God and one another merciful God we confess that we become distracted even weary in our discipleship we keep busy schedules we rush about captivated by technology and seduced by the lure of consumer goods we do not remain alert to your divine presence in our lives in the church and in the world make us better doorkeepers of our lives watching for you attentively Awaken us to your surprising power and glory and peace so we do not miss how near you are to our very own gates. Be gracious toward us, we pray, until we are gathered from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven into your embrace. We pray in the name of Christ who was and is and is to come. Amen.
Amen. The grace of God given to us in Jesus Christ strengthens us to the end so that we may be blameless when Christ comes again. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. be seated. And now we'll have our children's message and Patty Wooten is going to bring that to us today. Good morning. Let's see some smiles, okay? Okay, that's better. It's the beginning of Christmas season. It's the first Sunday of Advent, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what Advent means? Okay. Mm -hmm, that's right. It's a period of waiting for Christ, right, to celebrate his birth. And this morning, we're going to talk about waiting. It's hard to wait, isn't it? I sometimes get so tired of waiting and waiting and waiting for something I really want. Have you done that? Can you tell me of something that you're really looking forward to but you had to wait for? Okay. That's, <laughs> that's right, too. I wait for that, too. I'm really wanting something. Okay, man. Your birthday. Yeah, for your birthday. That's a good one. Yeah. What? The weekend. <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> also, probably for a school break, right? <laughs> okay. It's Christmas. Yeah, we wait for Christmas. Oh, yeah. Summer. Good one. Springtime, oh yes, it's a beautiful time of year, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. The new year, yes. That's a new start for us, isn't it? Yes. Waiting into your college? That's a long <laughs> wait, but that's exciting. <laughs> okay. Yes. In vacation, yes. You know, all this waiting that we do, we also have to plan, don't we, and prepare, like for birthdays that you've mentioned, and maybe what you're going to do when you get to college, or <laughs> when you um, go on vacation, or what you're going to do when the school breaks and stuff like that. So you've got to prepare for it. So that's what we're kind of talking about. But you know something that I have waited for, for every, every first Sunday of Advent, and that is you all, the children of our church, putting on the chrismons. Now a chrismon is actually a symbol of Christ, and every year we put it on the tree, and you know why I get excited about it is I know that my mother made some of those chrismons, and um, they would be, and some other women of our church have done that. They would be your great-grandmothers, your great-great-grandmothers. So 
these chrysmalons mean a lot to me and I enjoy and wait for you to put them on. So as soon as I finish with the children's message this morning, we're going to get up and we're going to start putting on the chrysmalons on the tree, okay? All right. Well, this morning, um, we're talking about the scripture from Mark, Mark 13, 24 through 37. And in that passage, Jesus is telling us that um, we um, have to, he did not know in this passage, he's telling us, his followers and us, about his return. He is going to return to us someday. He is going to come and join us. And that's something that we wait for and we prepare for. And he's telling us, um, he didn't know when he was going to return. Only God knew that. So before he was crucified, he didn't know, but he knew that he was going to return, and we're waiting for that. So Jesus tells us to remain watchful, and that means to stay alert and be prepared. How are some of the ways that we can be prepared for Christ coming back? Yes. That's right, we can pray. That's one of the best ways to be prepared. Pr pray, to pray to God and pray that you're waiting for him to come back, okay? Another thing that we can do is read our scriptures. Attend Sunday school and church and, and stay prepared. Now will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for this morning's scriptures. and for our beautiful chrismons. As we wait for Christmas and the time we will meet Jesus again. Help us to stay alert and remain watchful. Amen. Okay, will you join us at the Christmas tree? And we are going to put Christmas on.
always be seated. Now let us turn our thoughts and hearts and minds unto God as we pray. Let us pray. <coughs> oh, holy God, holy God, we thank you, Lord, for this day, this first Sunday in Advent when we begin to remember the story all over again, this the first Sunday of our church year, when it all begins. Today we remember that you brought your son into our world. You put skin on God, that we might walk among him and with him and be taught by him that we might feel his love, especially the love that took him to the cross. That is the ultimate love. That is your love. During this time of Advent, as we look toward Christmas morning, may we prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ. May we make room for him in our hearts that we might embrace him and welcome him in, not only to our hearts but to our lives. May we be directed by his teachings. May we feel his compassion toward others. May we be forgiving as he was forgiving. We thank you for this time of preparation this time of waiting. Loving God, we pray your Holy Spirit be with those who do walk in darkness now, those who grieve, those who are dying, those who are with those who die. We pray for the White family that you would give them peace and comfort during this time of grief. We pray for the Kennedy family that you also would give them that peace that passes all understanding. We pray for others here who are grieving. We lift up Roger Burris, who needs your healing power. For Bob Morris, for Jane Jones, for Augusta Dixon, thank you that you have brought them all through this illness and pray that you will continue to strengthen their bodies. Be with each of us, Lord, in the ways that we need you, those places in our lives where we feel lost or afraid, where we hurt, where we worry. Loving God, touch us in this season. Help us to feel close to you. Help us to feel your Holy Spirit with us, to feel the joy of the season and the hope. Thank you, loving God, for your presence. And now we join in the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture readings can be found on the back of our bulletin, or you can read them from your Bible or simply listen. Isaiah 64, verses 1 through 9. Listen now for the word of God. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence, from ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God 
besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you are angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yes, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all your people. Amen. From the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 24 to 37. Again, listen for the word of God. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, For you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he comes home and puts his slaves in charge, each with its own work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep, When he comes suddenly, and what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. This Sunday is a very special Sunday in the life of the church. Just as we decorate our homes for birthdays and graduations and Christmas and other special occasions, we decorate our church for this, our special holiday. Today marks the first day of the church calendar, the first Sunday in Advent. We sing special songs. We read special scripture readings. We light a candle. All these traditions remind us that something very special has happened and will happen again someday. As we go through the four weeks leading up to Christmas morning, we live again through the experience of the Jews of long ago who waited for centuries for the coming of their Messiah. We live again through the experience of the early Christians who were trying to make sense of the Christ who turned their lives upside down. These early Christians knew that just as Christ came once, so he shall come again to bring all of God's plans to fulfillment. Both the Jews and the early Christians looked with eager anticipation for the coming of the Messiah a Messiah who would bring justice and peace 
to a dying and hurting world. Advent is a time of waiting. Each Sunday marks the time as we move closer and closer to Christmas. Waiting is hard, especially as we live in a fast-paced, impatient society. We don't like to wait in lines or at traffic lights. We buy fast food so we don't have to wait for our meal to be cooked. We especially don't like to wait to buy things that we want right now. So we use credit cards, a wonderful device that allows us to have things now while we pay later. But no matter how much we avoid waiting, there are those things that we all must wait for. It takes nine months for a baby to be born. That's a long time, especially if you're the one carrying the baby inside you. I heard a uh-huh back here. <laughs> it takes four years to earn a college degree, sometimes longer, and even longer if you go for a master's or a doctorate. I think of the people who've lost their homes and their jobs this year during the hurricanes, during the, the wildfires out in California, people who've lost their homes and jobs and even family members, and it'll take years for them to rebuild. Years of looking at the destruction, years of waiting. I remember when I was writing the dissertation for my doctorate. It was a long, slow process that I didn't think I would ever finish. There were times when I was pretty sure it was beyond my grasp. The research, the interviews, and then the months and months of writing and editing. I remember when I was in the midst of the process, I emailed an old high school friend of mine and complained to him about my misery. He wrote back and told me, anything of any value takes time and effort. Now Mark's words weren't all that comforting, they weren't what I was asking for, but he helped me to see that there is a reason for my misery and a purpose. What I was doing was indeed something of great value, and it was worth my effort. During Advent, we don't just while away the month of December ticking off the Sundays like we have nothing better to do. Anything of value takes time and effort. The coming of Christ into our world is indeed something of great value. And so we take these four weeks to mark the time. But in the marking of the time, we invest ourselves. We make the effort to try to understand what all this means. Christ was born. What does that mean? And what difference does that make in our own personal lives and in the life of this church? Christ will come again. How does that change how we live our lives today? Isaiah was a prophet who lived 700 years before Christ was born. Isaiah was blessed with the ability to see and describe future events. He wrote many very moving passages about the coming of Christ, most notably about his birth and his death. We read in our passage this morning Isaiah's prayer of a longing, a great longing for God. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down that the mountains would tremble before you since ancient times no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. Isaiah lived in a period of waiting as well. He knew that the Messiah would come one day. His writings about the Christ gave hope to the people 
of Israel, especially during difficult times when it seemed that God had forgotten them and abandoned them. In this passage, Isaiah is longing for God's presence, to see God's activity in the world, that God would save God's people and bring justice and peace to Israel. He prayed that God would come down and be with them, God's people. Advent is a time that we too long for God's presence. Maybe it's because Christmas is such an important part of our culture. Baby Jesuses are everywhere. But maybe our longing for God is so strong, particularly because of the secularization of Christmas. In the midst of the glitzy wrapping paper and the Santa Clauses and the snowmen, we search for the meaning, the real meaning of Christmas. We have the desire to experience God's love, really experience God's love, his peace, his grace. We long to know, to fully know Christ, our Messiah. Advent is a wonderful time to spend in communion with God. If you don't already have a regular devotional time, now's the time to begin it, today. If even for these four weeks, I encourage you to spend 10, 20 minutes in prayer asking God to draw close to you, to give you God's peace and love. Read scripture. Isaiah is a wonderful place to begin. And as you leave today, you can pick up an Advent devotional booklet for you and for your family, where there's a reading every day of the season. Take the time to read these carefully and meditate on what Christ might be telling you personally. What is God's message for you today? A relationship with God doesn't just happen. Remember, anything of value takes time and effort. If we believe that our relationship with God is valuable to us, then the time and effort we put into the relationship is well worth it. Isaiah moves from longing to see and know and touch God to a prayer of confession. All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. That's what happens when we see and know and touch God. We become aware of our own sin and impurity next to God's perfection and purity. When we stand in God's presence, we cannot help but be in awe of God's greatness and holiness. We are moved to confess that even our righteous acts are like filthy rags next to God's purity and holiness. Advent is a wonderful time to take a good, hard look at ourselves. Is there anything keeping us and God apart? Is sin in any, of any kind in our lives keeping us at some distance from God? During the season of waiting for the coming of Jesus, can we also look into our own hearts honestly and admit to the state they are in and turn to God asking for forgiveness? Sometimes sin isn't easy to identify. It may be nagging at us, demanding for us to do something about it. Sometimes it may be more subtle. We may know that something isn't just quite right, but we can't put our finger on it. Sometimes sin is not what we've done, but rather what we have left undone. Remember the sermon last week. Have we done our best to care for the least of these in our midst? Have we cared about people who are hungry or homeless or sick or imprisoned? 
Have we seen Jesus in them? The thing about sin is that it changes us. Doesn't change God. God is still the same loving, caring, forgiving God that he's always been and always will be. Sin changes us. It transforms us from the person that God created us to be to someone else. Sin also creates distance between ourselves and God. You just can't live a life working against God and expect to feel close to God. We can work with God or against God. My experience is that working with God is a better choice. When we confess our sins, we humble ourselves before God, and the distance between us disappears. Then we can draw close and feel God's comfort and love. Isaiah goes on with his prayer to say, Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all work in your hand. There are only two times in the Old Testament that God is referred to as Father. This shows the intimacy that Isaiah felt with God. He could pray this prayer of confession and know that God would hear him and forgive him. Because a father loves his children and will do anything for them. We are the work of God's hands. Think about that for a moment. All that we are and all that we do is a reflection of the Father in heaven who created us to do good in the world. We are here to comfort the grieving, care for the sick, and minister to those who are hurting. We are loved by God more than we could ever imagine. More, much more, Then our own parents love us. Does God love us? And because God loves us so much, he sent us his only son to show us fully the height and the breadth and the depth of God's love. Through Jesus Christ, we learn what love really is. As we see him healing and caring for the sick, teaching and preaching the good news to the multitudes, and ministering one-on-one as he did so well. Think of the woman at the well, Zacchaeus, the woman caught in adultery, Nicodemus, the disciples. Think of all the people in the Bible who were changed forever because of Jesus and his love. And think of how you and I have been changed as well. Advent is the time to remember and to give thanks for Jesus in our lives. At this time of year, I give thanks for the people whom God has sent into my life to teach me about Jesus through word and example. There are many. But I especially remember my Grandma Jane's who bought me a Bible and who had me read the stories of the Bible to her. She gave me a card with the Lord's Prayer written on it and told me to memorize it because I need to know it one day. I still feel her presence with me at times. You all have been blessed with parents and grandparents and other special people in your lives who made Jesus come alive for you. Think about them this Advent season and give thanks to God for the blessings that they brought into your life. Our Old Testament reading this morning begins with a longing for God. Oh, that you would come down and be with us, oh God. It moves to a confession and then closes with an affirmation of faith. During these four weeks of Advent, may we draw closer to God. May we use this time 
to examine our lives and may we ask God's forgiveness for the sin that separates us from him. And may we appreciate all that the Father has done for us, especially through Jesus Christ. God is so good. In him we have life. God has come down to be with us in the person of Jesus Christ. May we celebrate his coming into the world, but most especially into our lives. Amen. And amen. And now, my friends, let us stand and affirm our faith as we recite together the Apostles' Creed. Children of God, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And now let us continue to worship God as we bring to him our tithes and gifts and offerings.
Let us pray, O holy God, we do give you thanks and honor and glory and praise. These gifts are gifts that come from our hearts. May they be useful in the building of your kingdom beginning right here at First Presbyterian Church. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Today we're trying something a little new, so bear with us. We think this is going to be smooth, but you know how things go. We will be celebrating communion today by intinction, and that means we will be taking a wafer and dipping it in the juice and then partaking of it there and then going back to the seat. And so how this is going to work, I believe, is the, um, the folks in the middle will part ways. You can go that way to these aisles. Come down the aisle, and there will be someone located there. You will take, uh, as I said, the wafer and the juice, and then go back around the outside. Does that make sense? Folks in the back, there will be someone there in the middle, and you will come merely come down the middle and go back around the outside. This is a very special meal. You know, the prophet Isaiah asked for the Lord to come down. Well, guess what he did? He came to be with us. And guess what? He will be with us in this very meal. This is a mystery, this meal that we share. We don't know exactly how Christ is here, in what way, but he has promised that he would be here to minister to us, to give us comfort, to give us peace, to give us joy. And so we come to the table with expectation, this longing to connect with God. May God be present to us in this meal. This is not a Presbyterian table. This table is open to all believers who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Holy God, we pray for your spirit to be with us today in this meal. We pray that we would feel those longing spirits that we have be comforted by your presence. We remember that last meal that you shared with your disciples, how you were trying to give them a message about what was to come. And we know that was a very sad meal for you. But we also look to the future for that great banquet table around which we shall all sit with all the people who have put their faith and trust in you. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us. You are with us in this life of ours. Thank you for your spirit that continues to lead and guide and protect. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In thy name we pray. Amen. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it and he said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread or drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We will have cups of juice here on the table for those that would prefer not to dip the wafer into the juice, and you're welcome to come and get that off of the communion table. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for the communion of this church, for the love that is here. The world can be a scary place, but in these walls we know that we are loved, and we thank you for that gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 104, O Lord, How Shall I Meet You?
May we take this message of joy into the world in our thankfulness to all. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.